Welcome everyone to our Alliance Army series. Today we're going to be looking at Alliance units that provide strong debuff effects. Effects that you may not be able to find anywhere else and will be massive upgrades to your army. Let's get started. Opening once again with Cathay, we have the Crane Gunners. Crane Gunners are the Cathayan Sniper unit, having a good range and decent missile strength. This unit is good at putting damage into targets long before they get into range of your army and can be good for dealing damage to large or monstrous units before they can get too close. The Crane Gunners also have a niche ability in the Shield Breaker debuff. This debuff reduces the block chance of enemy shields by 24. This is good for a ranged army that intends to fight shielded factions such as the Warriors of Chaos and other Cathayan factions. Simply point this unit at a dangerous shielded unit to reduce their block chance and focus fire with the rest of your army to get much more efficient usage of your army's ammunition. So a good long range sniper with an added ability to increase your ammo efficiency against heavily shielded factions. Moving on to Kislev we have the Ice Guard. This is a unit that comes with two variants, a sword variant and a glaive variant. This unit is a good all rounder with a good missile attack magical damage and a slowing effect called frostbite. This is another great unit for a missile based army as slowing attacks gives your army more firing time before the enemy can reach your front lines. Now whether you want to go with the sword or glaive variant depends on how much you're willing to protect this unit. The sword variant is cheaper to maintain and is better to keep out of close combat while the glaive unit variant has a good anti-large bonus this variant probably being better if you expect them to be compromised by enemy cavalry, allowing them to easily hold their own. So this is a good missile unit with slowing attacks and the ability to hold its own in melee. Coming from the Ogre Kings, we have the Noblar Trappers. A small chap unit for the Ogres with some surprising utility. While most may use this unit as a good ranged unit, it is actually a pretty decent tar pit unit. Its ability, Noblar Traps, is an excellent slow ability that can stop a lot of enemies in their tracks. Once again, being a great for ranged based armies, you can place these Noblars alone at the front, being a short unit. It allows for your backline to easily fire over them, while their traps hold enemies in place. You can also place them on your flanks as a trap for enemy cavalry, slowing them down ready for some focus fire. Or you could even just mix them in with your other units, adding extra stickiness to them and if paired with good damage dealers, can allow melee units to deal their damage without the enemy being able to retreat. If you need a good tar pit or a good slowing ability, Noblar Trappers have got you covered. Hailing from the realm of Slanesh, we have the Exalted Demonets of Slanesh. This unit is an incredibly dangerous infantry unit that can deal out incredible amounts of damage very quickly while also carrying a melee attack debuff in their charming attacks. Any unit struck by the demonettes will have their melee attack reduced by 8, massively reducing their damage potential. This means that demonettes not only deal out insane amounts of damage, but protect your other units in melee from harm as well. This makes the exalted demonette a great addition for any melee based army while also being a good flanker in balanced armies, being a strong hammer that eases the stress on your anvil. Next up from Slanesh we have the Fiends of Slanesh. Fiends of Slanesh, just like the Demonets, are another great damage dealer unit while also being much faster. These units also carry a painful debuff in Sporophic Musk. This debuff not only reduces melee attack but also melee defense. This means that the effectiveness of everyone in contact with the enemy unit goes up. Once again this unit can be used effectively in melee based armies or a balanced one while also, thanks to its 95 speed, can be used to hunt down enemy fast units with ease. Next up from Nurgle, we have the Feast of Nurgle. A single entity unit that is very tanky, having okay armor, a good amount of health, and regen. This unit has some great staying power, and its main use is to keep it in the middle of your units and provide a debuff for enemy units that engage. Its ability Slime Trail reduces the melee attack of all enemies nearby by 5, and also slows them by 10%. This makes it another good unit for melee based armies to reduce damage output of the enemy and keep them tied up in combat. It can also be good for making a slightly tougher, stickier front line in a balanced army. And with our last showing from the Chaos Gods we have the Spawn of Zinch. This unit is a large tanky unit with a large health pool, barrier to back it up and mass. All great qualities for reinforcing an infantry unit and preventing large units from punching through. 
This unit also comes with good damage capabilities and attacks that have an armor sundering effect. This reduces the armor of units by 30, essentially increasing the damage of all non-armor piercing damage by up to 30%. This means that mixing a spawn in with low armor piercing units can up their damage potential quite well on top of providing their own damage and holding power. These qualities make them good for melee based armies and imbalanced armies, but their size can be obstructive for your ranged units. Now moving away from the game 3 races, it's time to look at the Skaven. The first unit being the Death Runners. Despite having a low unit count and average melee stats, this is more than made up for by their abilities. They have a natural 30% physical resistance, making them much tankier than they appear, and their attacks have high armor piercing with a sizable anti-infantry bonus of 10. But the big debuff that earns them a place on this video is their armor sundering attack. However, this does not work the same way as the spawn. This effect reduces armor by 50%, meaning that factions that rely on high armor stats can melt when facing this unit. Their stalking and smoke bomb ability combined with their high speed means that this unit can also maneuver into position very easily, being able to pick off vulnerable backline units and to catch and soften tanky units quickly. This unit can be effective in ranged based armies as they're shorter units, allowing ranged units to shoot over them, taking advantage of the reduced armor. They can also be mixed into the front line like a spawn, increasing their damage potential and they can be used as strong flanking units. Scurrying in another infantry unit from the Skaven, the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers. A high damage dealing Skaven unit with a much higher unit count than the Death Runners. This unit has high armor piercing, frenzy, and a decent physical resistance for a bit of survivability. This unit also comes with magical attacks and a strong debuff in the contaminated effect. This effect reduces the leadership of enemy units by 10. This is a great unit for quickly routing enemies they engage with. This makes them good shock troops and can be especially useful for races that take advantage of low leadership like Slanesh and the Ogres. Take this unit in your armies that like to blitz down the enemy and get them routing as quickly as possible. Now for our last Skaven unit we have the Plague Claw Catapults. This is a great siege piece that can fit into any balanced or defensive army, being able to deal out a ton of damage before the enemy reaches you. The Plague Claw Catapult also has the same contaminated effects that the Plague Monks do, meaning that when the catapult hits its target, not only will the enemy be taking the leadership debuff from being hit by artillery, but the extra 10 from its weapon effect, meaning this unit can dole out a huge morale shock on enemy units. This catapult can probably be taken over most races' own artillery, even with just its base stats. Finishing out this showcase, we have the Lizardmen with the Bastilladon Solar Engine. This is a tanky mobile artillery piece that can deal out a lot of damage when it hits. With 40 speed and having a mass of 8,000, this unit can easily maneuver into position to get devastating effect while also being comfortable sitting in the backline and shooting over the rest of your army. This artillery also comes with a debilitating debuff being blinded. This debuff confers a huge reduction of minus 24 melee attack and melee defense, massively reducing the target's effectiveness in melee and also inflicts an accuracy debuff on ranged units. This unit can be particularly effective at dealing with factions that have lots of large units like ogres, being able to easily fire ogres engaged with your shorter frontline units. This is an excellent mobile artillery piece that can really debuff enemy units. And that is the final unit for this video. In the next video, we'll be going over units that can be considered all around powerful units, being able to find a place in armies based on their combat prowess alone. Thank you everyone for watching, and if you would like to know about units that fight buffs for your army, consider watching the previous video in this series which will appear on the screen now. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos in the future.